All right, we're back to business. Okay, so uh, what's a stress? What's a strain? Okay, some of you already took uh, material engineer. So anyone such give me a definition, what you learned, what's a stress? Yeah. It's a force of area. It's a force of over area. Okay, so that's a mathematical description. Any other description? It's pressure. That's a physical description. Any other description? Okay, this, here's my description. It's the intensity of the force you apply. Intensity, basically means like density, right? So how much force you apply per area? So that's the uh, definition, right? So basically, we need to find out the intensity of the force. Why we need that? Why don't you just use force? Why you want uh, uh, stress? Because when we try to describe material, when we do the design, how things feel depend on not just the force, depend on their size, right? Say if I have this piece of paper, I can just easily tear it, right? Everyone can do it. Now I have this stack of paper. If I try to tear it, can I do it? I cannot. You cannot tear a book just together, right? Because you still have the same force you're applying. But why you cannot tear it? Is the material better, this book over this piece of paper? No. It's because there are too many pieces of paper there, right? So when you use the same force, then each page just gets a very small portion of the force. And therefore, they can strong enough to hold it, and they won't be pulled apart, right? So it's the same thing. If you have anything small, you can easily break it. And you can break your finger easily. But it's hard to break your arm or break your leg or the whole body because that's different size, right? So dimension matters. And that's why we want something, look at the intensity, right? So you take the dimension into account. This way, you will be better judged, you know, whether this thing is stronger or that thing is stronger, right? It's like you make $1,000, he make $1,000, right? Who make more money? Hard to tell. You make $1,000 one day, he make $1,000 a year. So who make more money? You make more money. That's the intensity, the density that matter, right? The same reason. So what matter for the force, for the load, is uh, intensity. So basically, we have the stress, <coughs> all right? So we're talking about mechanical stress, right? But sometimes the mechanical stress give people a little bit of a headache because people get confused and that kind of uh, mental stress, right? All right, so now stress is strain. And there are actually uh, different type of stress strain because depend on the load, right? So when you have a load that they're applying perpendicular to a surface, what kind of force we call it? Normal force. So normal force, then you can divide the area so you can get we call it normal stress, right? So if you have a normal force, okay, so first, Okay, normal stress. So what's normal stress? It's just when you have a something here, you're applying force. That's normal to the surface. So then you calculate the stress. It's basically the force over area. Because it's, everything is normal to the surface, so you call it normal stress. Similarly, right, as we just show here on the board, so if you have something here, but you're applying a shear force. Now you can define stress as well, right? So this cross-section area, we call it A. So same here, it's A. So then you can have a shear stress, we call V over A. And we use different uh, letter to denote it. So stress, normally when you use sigma to represent normal stress, and use shear tau to represent the shear stress. Right. So that's just a definition. Right. So the meaning is the intensity of the force you applying there. Right. So these two concepts are very parallel. Now, what's a string? What's a normal string? 
it's like if there's uh, two opposing forces, like opposite mm -hmm. on something, like it's like a... Yeah, it's like this one. You have a bar. You're applying a pair of force, right? You're applying now, I'm applying a pair of positive force, right? So this thing will deform, or elongate, right? So the elongation will generate a deformation, right? So let's say this thing initially is this length. So you have this small bar you're applying force. When you're applying a pair of force, it will deform into this line, right? So the length will change to L, and that can be called initial length plus a, a change. Right? So how much you can elongate something? Right? If you have, you're applying the same force. If I apply to this thing, okay, say if I just use my small force, I can elongate this much, right? Say here, elongate like twice the long. But the same force you apply, if I apply to this pain. Okay, now I stretch it. See how much deformation I generate? Nobody can notice. So small. Why? Because this thing is much stronger, right? Okay, now if I apply to, I don't have two there. So if I apply the force, okay, if I just apply to half of the pink part, so I generate this much deformation. Now if the same force, if I apply to the whole thing, I generate much longer deformation. So therefore, when I apply force, how much elongation, how much deformation you can get, depending on initially how long is the piece. It's like, like you pull a rubber band. Right? Same force, if you pull a long rubber band, you can stretch much more. So the deformation is not just depending on how much force you apply. It's also depending on initial dimension. Right? If you apply uh, for same force to a longer piece of same material, you're stretching longer. So therefore, you need the deformation taken into a consideration. So we define the deformation to normalize with the deformation. So we define strain, and we use the epsilon to define the intensity of the deformation. So that's L zero. And that's normal strain. OK. So we define the ratio of the change, that's what we call strain. Or intensity of the deformation, we call strain. What's that? What's that? That's just the initial length, L0. Sometimes you use okay. capital L. What's hmm? the name of the symbol? Oh, the, that's, I think we call it the epsilon. That's a Greek letter. Delta. That's delta, small delta. Delta, yeah. And the delta just means the deformation part. Right? So delta is uh, L minus L0, the change in length. All right. Now, how do you define a shear strain? OK, when you have a block, right? let's say you have this block. Maybe we can move to the next page. Oh, I have other. OK, so let's say we have this block here. right? This part attached to what? Remember, we ignore the weight, right? The gravity. So you apply applying force here. How is this piece going to deform? It's going to deform something like this, right? You will twist, move to this way, right? You have a, like a piece of a rubber eraser. You shear it, you apply a shear force, it will just deform, right? It's like this one. So I can still also apply shear. So if I apply shear, you see here, how it change? Right? So you just move one side, move up. So this is the, we call it a distortion or twist, right? Deformation. Now this kind of deformation, how can we describe it? You can describe it by how much this point move, right? But how much this point move will depend on the initial length. If I just look at the yellow part, right? And if I apply the same force, this part just move a little bit. If I apply the, the whole thing, then move more. So how can I now dimensionalize it? So I can divide the initial dimension, right? So this displacement divide the initial dimension. What's that? That's basically angle. How much is the angle it rotate? So therefore, we define the shear strain by this angle gamma. So this is the angle gamma. So shear strain is basically a change in angle, the small angle gamma. 
Okay, remember in this class we talk about all small definition. So everything is small range. We're not talking about 180 degree. We just talk about let's say 0.1 degree or one degree or something. So tiny definitions. And even for stretch, right? Delta. We're not talking about something double the length. Right? We talk about you have a bar, a metal bar, a compressor. It will deform, let's say, one of a, a thousands or one of a hundreds. Right? So it's a small definition. Normally you won't say that kind of definition. Although later on we're going to learn bigger definitions like this. Right? So for example, if you pull a piece of bone or metal, you won't say. But if you pull a piece of muscle, you can definitely say your uh, the, this muscle change shape. Right? So that's a large deformation we're going to talk about later on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you apply a force that's not perpendicular, not parallel, at any angle, should that be counted as one normal plus one shear? Right. Yeah. From static, we know any force, physics, one force you can decomposed into two components. So you have a normal and you have a shear. So therefore, in general, if I apply a load to something, there will be a normal stress and shear stress simultaneously. And we're going to have that later on in the beam deformation part. Right? So we'll talk about that way later. All right. Yeah? The stress equation, are mm -hmm. like the original area or the area Good. Good question. Anyone can answer that? They all review the same. The reason is we talk about small deformation, so we ignore the changes. So in later on, we will learn the advanced theory of mechanics. So you can use the initial one, they call Lagrange format. Or you can use the updated one, that's called Euler format. So they will be different. And there is an equation linked to it. It's much more complicated later on. So how you define But in our class, we talk about small deformation. So the area before deformation, after deformation, we ignore the difference. So therefore, you can use the initial one. Right? You assume the deformed one is the same as the initial one. Yeah. Is gamma measured from the horizontal axis? Uh, yeah. No, it doesn't matter. It's just initially the lines here, it, it, it rotates. It's the same angle that it changed. Yeah, it can be referred to any direction. Initially, let's say you initial your fiber is this way, right? You give a shear, the fiber changes this way. So you just measure the difference, the change in angle. So spatially, it can be any direction. Right. OK, those are all very good questions, because that's the concept. You want to know all this to make sure you understand the concept clearly. Right. OK, any other questions? No? OK, if no other question, let me just quickly go over uh, one thing. And then we can um, actually, we're going to have a, a prerequisite quiz, right? OK, so uh, the quick question is, how is stress related to strain? You learn that from material engineering, right? Right, that's what you did. Material engineering, you learn the content, and also you did the experiment. You basically measure stress strain relation, remember there? OK, so pull up your own note, see what's there. Maybe we'll cover it next time. All right. And here, before I end, let me jump to this one slide here. We'll talk about this later. So remember last time we talked about this equation of equilibrium, right? When you have anything equilibrium, you have this set of equations. So let's say we are focused on 2D situation. You have Three equations, sigma fx equals zero, sigma fy equals zero, sigma m, and the direction So my question is, is this the only format? When you have an object in equilibrium, do you have to have, to have two force equations plus one moment equation to solve the problem? No, you have multiple choice. So you can, because you can write as many equations as you want, all the three Force equation, moment equation, right? But the only thing is you need to keep in mind is in 2D, the independent ones, there are only three. But the format can be the first one, or you can write one force equation, two moment equation. So moment to two locations in equilibrium. 
Okay. Or you can write three moment equations. Okay. Let me show you quickly with one example. All right. So remember last time, Dr. Uh, Liu gave you this example. Right. Try to find the reaction force here. So you have the N, uh, A X A Y, and then here the same uh, B X B Y. Right. So you have a load here. That's known. Okay. There are multiple ways to solve it. Right. You can use two force equation plus one moment. Or you can just use three moment equation. You know there are only three independent equations. So for example, you can look at all the moment to here equals zero. All the moment to here equals zero. All the moment to here equals zero. That's three equations. Right? That's one. Or another way, you can look at this. Cut this part off as your free body diagram. Just, right? Free body diagram you can do anywhere. Right? So you, you just draw this one out here. This is your object. That's a free body. So you label all the force here. So you have this we call N1, and you have this one N2. Because this are the bar cable, they can only carry force in the direction of the cable. Right? So then you can write the equation. So what I'm trying to say is, when you write the equation of equilibrium, there are multiple ways you can write it. You can write different equations. But remember, there are only three independent. You cannot write six equations and say, I can solve six problems, six anodes. No. You can only solve a series. All right. OK, so next there will be, uh, we leave 10 minutes. Uh, we have a few uh, quick questions, just uh, like a prerequisite quiz, to test on you, to test you on the equation of equilibrium and the statics. All right, uh, you hand up. And next time we'll continue to talk about stress strain relation. All right. Can you pass quickly?